What is raiding of reserves? Mr. Chairman, the PAP government and some of its MPs like to invoke the claim of raiding of reserves to attack alternative policy ideas and proposals put up by the opposition. In order to have a more productive debate in this House, it will be helpful to have an understanding of what constitutes raiding of reserves. I would like to suggest two criteria to assess any new proposal that might affect the reserves. Firstly, the amount of expenditure required for the new proposal relative to the size of the reserves and net investment return. And secondly, the purpose of the expenditure. Any proposal that passes these two criteria, where the amount involved is small relative to the reserves or even the net investment return and serve an important purpose, should not be accused of raiding the reserves. Let me illustrate the two criteria using the affordable home scheme, which the Progress Singapore Party, PSP, recommended during the recent public housing motion on February the 7th. During the debate, I explained that the affordable home scheme will only defer the accumulation of reserves because the deferred land cost will be collected when the flat is sold in the future. And even if the whole deferred land cost of about $3 billion per year is not collectible, it is only 6.4% of the net investment return and 12.8% of the net investment return contribution. We do not even need to use our reserves. So we have passed criteria one comfortably. For criteria two, the money is to be spent on an important and noble purpose, which is to make the HDB flat affordable and accessible for every Singaporean of each generation. It will allow Singaporeans to retire comfortably without having to sell his flat or downgrade. The financial security accorded is expected to unleash the innovative and entrepreneurial spirit in the Singaporeans, and we will be able to better compete with the rest of the world. So we also passed criteria two. Hence, based on the two criteria above, the affordable home scheme is an example of an alternative policy that does not constitute a rating of reserves according to my definition. I hope to hear from the minister what does he think. In the future, from my point of view, if the government makes such accu accusations again, I will call them baseless allegations. Singaporeans deserve better for country, for people. Then with regard to um, his last point about what is the definition of raiding the, the reserves, um, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's not a term of art, but essentially we have a framework. We have a framework on how the reserves are to be used. When the principal amount is taken or drawn down or when land is, is alienated um, and if it is not made good or put back, that is a draw on the reserves. It, it's, a, it's a simple principle. Uh, that we adhere to. The framework is clear. It is not necessary for me to go into a, a definitional uh, argument. Um, and the, the reasons and the rationale of when you, know, you can have a, a draw on the reserves uh, are clear. A pandemic would be a good reason um, when you're f facing pot potential you know, catastrophe and you have to save the economy and you have to save people. I mean, that's something that's built into the current framework. And the reserves can only be used uh, with the agreement of the President. Third question, with regards to the uh, rating of uh, reserves. So your answer basically means that, does it mean that as long as the government got a set of rules, we cannot debate against a set of rules? In this case, it's a set of rules reg regarding uh, reserve management and uh, recording of reserves. So you can always say that, oh, what you have Propose is not in line with our uh, 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 reserve management policies, but we can still discuss about it. There's no need.
to say right from the beginning that this raiding of reserve and it's not only one time, many, many times by many people and over the mass media and all that. Could, could we keep it concise so that yeah. others can ask yeah, the so, clarifications? Yeah, so third question, yeah. Okay. Uh, the third question was, um, I think that the member put it this way. He said, does it mean that if the government has a set of rules, we cannot debate it? Uh, because he, can, he said, you can always say it's not in line. And uh, he also said that there was no need to say that it's, it's, it's raiding not one time, but all the time. Uh, let, let me deal with the two separately. The, the first one, does it mean that we have a set of rules? The answer is yes, we do have a set of rules. Does it mean that you cannot debate the rules? No. If you want to change the reserve framework, by all means, you can debate that, you can suggest that it should be changed. But so long as the rules are in place, and so long as what is proposed does, is not in conformance with those rules, and is a draw on the reserves, then it means that it, is, it falls outside, or it, it breaches, if you like, or it, it, it is, is not in accordance with the rules. So there, there are two things. You have a set of rules, and if you want to debate whether that should or should not be the rule, that's entirely up to the, that's the member's prerogative. But if what you happen to be proposing doesn't fall within the rules, then I think the government's entitled to say that it would be a draw or to put it in more uh, slightly, uh, you know, uh, easier to understand form, it would be a raid on the reserves. And secondly, um, Mr. Leong suggested that there's no need to say raiding the reserves not one time, but many, many times. Well, the answer is that if your proposals do we actually intend to draw down the proposals not one time but many, many times, then inevitably it will draw the reaction that you are raiding not one time but many, many times. So it all depends on your, your proposal. 